All right. Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Kirsch. I'm going to go over our notes um, with you right now. This is notes for uh, lesson 4.8, um, inverse trig functions. If you can print out this paper, you can put it on there. Otherwise, I have them in class. But uh, the main thing you're going to absolutely need is this table on page 356, which gives these integrals right here. But we'll get back to that in a second. So uh, let's do a little review here. Um, some things you're going to need, some simple things that are going to make your life easier. Uh, number one, the sine of 30 degrees. Well, we know what that is, right? That is one half. If I draw that 30 degree triangle, the sine is one half. Um, but then we have these other two functions, which have sine with a negative one and the words arc sine. And this simply, if you remember, it means just to go back to figure out that angle. And these both mean the exact same thing. So sine negative one is how your calculator writes it. Um, we'll use the words arc sine. It means the exact same thing. This means to find the ratio. This means find the angle. So we're gonna be working with these today in class. Uh, another, another skill you're gonna need today, a huge one. This is probably the, the most important thing for today. Factoring something like this, well, most of us know that's rather easy, right? That's just x minus 4, and that's x plus 4. However, what most of us skip is this step in between that says this should be written as x being squared, and this should be written as 4 being squared, and then that's where those two parts come from. Most of us just go straight from here to here in our head, and we leave out this middle step that says take the square root of both of them, so then you'll know what that number is. And this step right here is going to be what you need to do in your homework today. So um, you can do that in your head. Don't forget that's where it came from. Um, simplify here. At first glance, that looks pretty simple to me. However, 4 can be rewritten as ln of 2 squared, right? That's what 4 is. And then if I have this power inside a log, the rule is this power can come down. So the 2 can come out there. There's already a 5 out there, so that makes it 10 ln of 2 minus 3 ln of 2 equals 7 ln of 2. So whenever you're simplifying logs, look for powers. Uh, if there's powers inside your log, they can always be simplified out. So always do that or else you're not going to get a simplified answer. And it's going to be hard to match up some of the homework answers if you're not simplifying them. All right, uh, problem A. Um, here we go. We have to integrate this crazy function. And we could try some u substitution, but we have a lot going on here. So what you need to recognize is that this function matches one of these three integrals. And that's all you have today. You have these three integrals. Uh, every problem will match one of these. And if it looks like this, well, it's either going to match this top one or it could match this bottom one because it has a square root in it. So this integral is going to match one of these if after I do some u substitution. So watch the process here. The process is to use this logic up here and to say, look, this is really dx over the square root, not 16, but 4 squared, kind of like we re rewrote that, minus, not this thing, but 3x squared. And that's your first step. Take the square root, break it down into 4 squared and 9 squared. And if you can do that step, the rest of it just kind of falls in place. So now what we're going to do is do some u substitution. This is always a u. So it makes it real simple today if you can get to these. If you can get to these, life's pretty easy. Um, let's see here, this is du, dx, 3, let's pull this over here, 1 third du, dx, there's my dx, put that in there, 1 third, um, with a du, square root, 4 squared, let's leave that alone, minus u squared, and now we have that letter for letter lined up perfectly. We have a du du, we have an a which is a constant, we have a u which is a variable, so now we can go right into the answer of one third arc sine, arc sine again, your calculator just says inverse sine, same thing, and 
u on the top, and u is 3x. Uh, a on the bottom, a is 4, and don't forget to put plus c. So they are rather straightforward. If you can, if you can line them up here, the key is to write it out this way and let u be that part that's being squared. There, there, and there. All right, rather straightforward. Let's go on to another example, example b. So now we have this function, and we could do some integration, but it does get tricky. It gets really tricky really fast, but hey, it, it's going to be one of these, and it matches that. I have something squared plus something else squared. It's no square root, no, so it's absolutely this function right here. It's arc tangent. Well, what do I do first? First thing I do is uh, I'm going to pull this constant out. I'm going to deal with that constant later. I can always do that. Um, this is 2 squared. This is 5x squared. And I always write it like that. Just That's a simple step to do. And now what? Now let's make it look like that. This is my u, u is 5x, du, dx, 5, 1 fifth, du, dx. There's my dx right there, so it's 1 fifth coming out. So, oops, I put this wrong out here, I apologize. That should have been a 3. I just pulled the constant straight out. That's a 3, my fault. So now I pull out the 1 fifth. That is now 3 fifths integral. And dx is now du. And that is 2 squared. And this is 5x. Whoops, I'm in the world of u. So it is now u squared. And now I have it exactly looking like this. There's a du by itself, an a squared, a u squared, and then I can go right to my answer. Don't forget the constant, 3 fifths, uh, 1 over the a value, 1 over the a value, um, arc tangent, and um, u, which is 5x, and a, which is 2 plus c, and that becomes 3 tenths arc tangent 5x over 2 plus c. Follow the steps, do them in order, and you will wind up at one of these exactly, and then just follow the guidelines for doing that. Um, again, make sure you do this right here. That's the key, and this is always you. Most of the times people write 25 over here, and it's not 25, it's 5. All right, last problem, probably the trickiest one. Um, it is tough. Um, we've done that one, we've done that one, we have not done that one, so let's do an example down here for arc secant. Um, looking at arc secant, well, how am I going to get a u out there? Uh, there is no u out there, right? There's nothing outside here, but if I do some substitution, it will come out there. So watch how this works. Again, the first step is always on these. Let's rewrite it. This is e to the 2x squared minus 3 squared. I just broke those in half. I took the square root, the square root here, the square root there. Now, over here, again, I've always said, let's let that be our u value. Well, where does that get us? Let's see here, du dx is um, e to the 2x. Don't forget the chain rule. All right, let's go ahead and divide this over. Um, that's one half, um, and in the denominator, let me rewrite that. I'm going to have to divide by one, and everything in the denominator is a two and an e to the two x. And then this would be what du, and let's put dx over there. So I've split up this differential. This is over here. All of this comes down. Usually we've only been bringing a two down here, but I'm going to bring this variable down here. Now watch the substitution here, it's kind of neat. This is dx, that's dx, so all of this has to go over there. I can put the 1 half out in front, and I can put the du there, and then this is in the denominator, so I'm going to put it right there. I'm not going to put it outside, I'm going to leave it inside. And then what do we have? Well, I'm not going to change this yet. 
but look what that does. Now I have a variable up out there. Now I have one half integral du. That's u. And this is u squared minus 3 squared. And what do you know? That looks exactly like that. du u u squared minus a squared. du u u squared minus a squared. And now just follow the rules. Uh, don't forget the constant. Uh, 1 over a, that's 1 over 3. Um, arc secant. Um, absolute value of the u, which is e to the 2x. And over a, which is 3, plus c, 1, 6, arc secant, e to the 2x, 3 plus c. It's a lot of steps. That's as hard as they get for this chapter. Uh, congratulations, you made it to the end of the chapter. This is the hardest one we have to do. Um, but again, try to get them to these. All right, do your best on the homework. We will finish it in class tomorrow.